Welcome back historians. How do religions develop? Beginnings. Around 1800 BC, a group called the Israelites appeared in Southwest Asia. The Israelites were different from many other groups at the time. They practiced monotheism. This means they believed in one God. Other groups practiced polytheism, the worship of more than one God. The Israelites also believed that God sent prophets. These prophets were messengers who shared God's words. The Israelites wrote about their religious beliefs and history. Some of these writings became the Hebrew Bible. These beliefs eventually became a religion called Judaism. Today, the followers of this religion are called Jews. God told Abraham to settle in Canaan. A shortage of food later forced the Israelites to leave Canaan. Many Israelites moved to Egypt. The Pharaoh enslaved the Israelites. Jewish belief states that the Israelites descended from a man named Abraham. The Hebrew Bible says that God told Abraham to settle in Canaan. God promised that Abraham and his descendants would always control Canaan. Abraham's grandson Jacob was also named Israel. Jacob had 12 sons. His family eventually divided into separate family groups, called tribes. Jacob's 12 sons became the leaders of the 12 tribes of Israel. The Israelites had to work at hard labor. They prayed to God for freedom. The Hebrew Bible says that one day God spoke to a prophet named Moses. God told Moses to tell the Pharaoh to let the Israelites go. The Pharaoh refused, so God sent 10 plagues to Egypt. Plagues are events that cause great problems for many people. Eventually, the plagues convinced the Pharaoh to let the Israelites leave. The Pharaoh then changed his mind. He sent his army to catch the Israelites. The Hebrew Bible states that God parted the Red Sea so that the Israelites could cross. When the Egyptians followed, they drowned. The journey of the Israelites out of Egypt is called the Exodus. The Jewish holy festival of Passover celebrates their freedom from slavery. During their journey, the Israelites received a covenant, or agreement, with God. The Hebrew Bible says God promised to guide the Israelites safely back to Canaan. The Israelites promised to follow his teachings. The teachings are known as the Torah. These teachings later became part of the Hebrew Bible. The Ten Commandments are part of the Torah. A commandment was a rule that God wanted the Israelites to follow. The laws of many nations are also based on principles in the Ten Commandments. The Land of Canaan. The Hebrew Bible says that Moses died before reaching Canaan. A new leader named Joshua led the Israelites to Canaan. They found other groups already living there. Two of these groups were the Phoenicians and the Philistines. These groups had different beliefs and ways of life than the Israelites. The Phoenicians lived in cities by the Mediterranean coast. They became skilled sailors and traders. Soon, the Phoenicians controlled Mediterranean shipping and trade. This helped spread Phoenician ideas. They developed an alphabet to help them trade. An alphabet is a group of letters that stands for sounds made when talking. Their alphabet influenced the Greek and Roman alphabets. We still use the Roman alphabet today. The other group was the Philistines. They came from near present-day Greece. The Philistines made iron tools and weapons. They built walled towns and have put together a strong army. The Israelites believed that God wanted them to claim Canaan as their homeland. According to the Hebrew Bible, Joshua led them into battle to achieve this goal. At the city of Jericho, the Israelites marched around the city walls for six days. On the seventh day, the walls fell. The Israelites took control of Jericho. Joshua led the Israelites into other battles. They divided the lands they captured between the twelve tribes. When Joshua died, leaders called judges ruled the tribes. The judges settled disputes and led troops into battle. A woman judge named Deborah became known for her bravery. She helped advise troops in battle. After many battles, the Israelites won control of central Canaan. The Hebrew Bible states that they worshipped God in a tabernacle. This is a large tent-like building that could be taken along as they moved from place to place. The tabernacle housed the Ark of the Covenant, a wooden chest. 
the Israelites believed the Ten Commandments were written on tablets kept in the Ark. They carried the Ark into battle with them. They believed it would ensure a victory, or make certain they won. Early Kings The Israelites had settled much of Canaan by 1100 BC however, they feared the powerful Philistines. The Israelites called for a king to unite them against this enemy. They asked the judge Samuel to choose a king. He warned that a king would tax or enslave them. Still, the Israelites demanded a king. Samuel chose Saul to become the first Israelite king. Saul helped the Israelites win many battles against the Philistines. However, according to the Hebrew Bible, he disobeyed some of God's commands. God told Samuel to choose a new king. Samuel then chose a young shepherd named David to be king. David was already known for his bravery. The Hebrew Bible tells the story of his victory over the giant Philistine warrior, Goliath. Goliath dared any Israelite to battle one-on-one. -on -one. David accepted the challenge. He killed Goliath with a single stone to his forehead. Saul put David in charge of his army. David won victories, and he became even more well-known. Saul then became jealous. He tried to kill David, but David escaped. Saul later died in battle and David became king. David is also believed to have written many psalms, sacred songs and poems. David is considered the greatest Israelite king. After David died, his son Solomon became king. Solomon made peace with many nearby groups. He also built cities and Jerusalem's first temple. Solomon was known as a wise leader. His proverbs are found in the Hebrew Bible. Proverbs are familiar sayings that share lessons for living. Solomon did many good things as king. However, the Israelites eventually turned against him. They did not like working on his many building projects or paying his high taxes. After Solomon died around 922 BC, the Israelites entered a difficult period. Their kingdom became divided and powerful neighbors threatened them. Two kingdoms. The ten northern tribes rebelled against Jerusalem after Solomon died. These tribes started a new kingdom called Israel. Samaria was its capital. The two southern tribes formed Judah. The capital of this smaller kingdom was Jerusalem. During this time, large empires grew around Israel and Judah. The Assyrians and Chaldeans became powerful. They wanted to control the trade routes that ran through the Israelite kingdoms. The Assyrians spread fear across the region. They forced the people they conquered to pay tribute. This meant that people had to give the Assyrians money or enslaved people. If they did not receive tribute, the Assyrians would destroy buildings or entire towns. The Kingdom of Israel refused to pay tribute to the Assyrians. As a result, the Assyrians invaded Israel in 722 BC. They captured Samaria and other major cities. They wanted complete control. They brought people into Israel from other parts of the Assyrian Empire. These new settlers mixed with the Israelites. This produced a new culture, whose people were called Samaritans. The Samaritans accepted many Israelite religious beliefs. They also adopted religious practices that the Israelites did not accept. Eventually, the two groups had little in common. Today's Judaism grew from the religious practices in the Kingdom of Judah. Later, the Chaldeans conquered Jerusalem and began making major changes. At first, the Chaldeans chose a Judean king to rule Judah. This king secretly planned to set Judah free. He did not listen to those people who warned against a revolt. After a long conflict, the Chaldeans retook the city. They then destroyed much of it, including the temple. The Chaldeans took the king and thousands of other people to live in Babylon. This time became known as the Babylonian exile. To exile a people means to force them to leave their home or country. During this difficult time, prophets played an important role in Jewish life. They provided encouragement and guidance for the Israelites. They tried to get people to change their ways. The goal of making the world a better place influenced many people who came after them. Return to Judah. The Judeans' time in Babylon was called an exile. This is a period of time when people are forced to live away from their homes. 
During this time, they became known as the Jews. Their religion became known as Judaism. In Babylon, the Jews did not have a large temple. Instead, they gathered in smaller houses of worship. These were called synagogues. The Jews came together on the Sabbath. This is a weekly day of rest and worship. According to tradition, it lasts from sundown Friday to nightfall Saturday. Jews still observe the Sabbath today. Many Jews in Babylon hope to return to Judah. Eventually, a group called the Persians defeated the Chaldeans. In 538 BC, the Persian king Cyrus II allowed Jews to return to Judah. Some Jews stayed in Babylon, but many returned to Judah. They began to rebuild Jerusalem. They built the second temple. This replaced the temple that was destroyed by the Chaldeans. The Jews could not have their own government or king under Persian rule. They looked to religious leaders to guide their society. These leaders included priests and scribes. Priests were religious scholars who often taught the Jewish faith. The scribes wrote down the five books of the Torah on rough pieces of paper called parchment. They sewed these pieces together to make scrolls. These writings make up the Hebrew Bible. The Hebrew Bible has three main parts. They are the Torah, the prophets, and the writings. The Hebrew Bible contains 24 books that were written over many centuries. It presents the laws and rules of the Israelites. It also tells about Jewish history, art, literature, poetry, and proverbs. The first book of the Hebrew Bible is Genesis. It gives the Israelite view of how humans began. Genesis also explains how God punished the world for wicked behavior. This is told through the story of Noah's Ark. This book also describes why the world has many languages. The book of Isaiah details God's plan for a peaceful world. The book of Daniel says that the Jews believed that goodness would eventually replace evil and suffering. Daniel was an advisor to a Babylonian king. He was a Jew and he refused to worship Babylonian gods. The Chaldeans threw him into a lion's den. God protected Daniel. This story reminds Jews that God will rescue them from evil. Christians and Muslims also share this hope for a better world. Jewish Daily Life The teachings of the Torah shaped daily life for the early Jews. These teachings affected family life, food, and clothing. The Torah required Jews to help others and treat them fairly. It also encouraged responsibility, self-control, and loyalty to God. The Torah described roles for Jewish fathers and mothers. Jewish families valued education, especially for young men. Sons learned a trade. They also learned to read the Torah. Reading the Torah was the center of Jewish daily life. Everything the students learned, such as the alphabet or Jewish history, they learned from the Torah. This is why religious teachers became leaders in Jewish communities. Daughters learned to be wives, mothers, and housekeepers. They studied Jewish rules about food, the Sabbath, and holidays. They also learned about women of ancient Israel, such as Ruth and her mother-in-law, Naomi. Jewish dietary laws tell what Jews can eat. Ancient Jews could eat only animals that were considered clean. These included cattle and sheep, but not swine, pigs. Food prepared according to Jewish dietary laws is called kosher. Animals used for kosher meat must be killed in a certain way. This meat is inspected, salted, and soaked in water. Jews cannot eat meat and dairy products together. They also cannot eat crab, shrimp, or other shellfish. The arrival of Greek rule. In 331 BC, Alexander the Great defeated the Persians. Alexander brought Greek language and culture to Judah. He also allowed Jews to stay in Judah. Judah remained the center of Judaism. Many Jews, however, had moved to other parts of Alexander's empire. Groups of Jews living outside Judah became known as the Diaspora. The members of the Diaspora remained loyal to Judaism. Many also spoke Greek and adopted parts of Greek culture. Some Jewish scholars in Egypt copied the Hebrew Bible into the Greek language. This Greek version of the Hebrew Bible is called the Septuagint. A version is a different form or type of something. 
This Greek version brought the Hebrew Bible to people who were not Jews. It also helped spread Jewish ideas throughout the Mediterranean world. After Alexander died, four of his generals divided his empire. One kingdom covered most of Southwest Asia. A family called the Seleucids gained control of Judah by 200 BC. The Seleucid king Antiochus IV required Jews to worship Greek gods and goddesses. Many Jews refused to give up their religion. A priest named Judas Maccabeus led the fight against the Seleucids. His army was called the Maccabees. They drove the Seleucids out of Judah. They also removed all of the statues of Greek gods and goddesses from the temple. The annual festival of Hanukkah, an important Jewish holiday, celebrates this event. Roman rule in Judea. In 63 BC, Roman forces conquered the land of Judah and renamed it Judea. The name Roman came from their capital, Rome. This city was located far away from Judea in what is now the country of Italy. At first, the Romans chose a follower of Judaism to be the king of Judea. This ruler, Herod, built forts and cities. The second temple in Jerusalem was also built during his reign. This temple was the center of Jewish worship. After Herod died, Roman officials ruled Judea. Jews began to disagree about how to practice Judaism. They also disagreed about how to interact with the Romans. One group of Jews was called the Pharisees. They had the support of the common people. They taught in synagogues. The Pharisees worked to make Judaism a religion of the home and family. They focused on both written and oral law. Oral law is the unwritten understandings that are passed down by word of mouth. Another group was the Sadducees, which included wealthy noble families. Many served as priests and scribes in the temple. They focused on applying the Torah's laws to temple ceremonies. They disagreed with many of the Pharisees' teachings. For example, they rejected the idea of oral law. A third group was called Asenes. These priests had broken away from the temple in Jerusalem. They lived in the desert by the Dead Sea. They prayed and waited for God to deliver them from Roman rule. They also followed only the written law of the Torah. The Asenes may have written the Dead Sea Scrolls. A fourth group, the Zealots, lived in Judea. They believed that the Jews should fight the Romans for their freedom. In the Ad 60s, many Jews were waiting for a deliverer. A deliverer is a person sent by God to rescue people from trouble. Anger at Roman rule reached its peak during this time. The Zealots got ready for battle. In Ad 66, the Zealots revolted. They drove the Romans from Jerusalem. However, the Romans reclaimed the city four years later. They killed thousands of Jews and forced many others to leave. The Romans also destroyed the Second Temple. Today, the Western Wall is all that remains of the temple complex. In Ad 132, the Jews again revolted. The Romans also defeated this rebellion. The Jews were no longer allowed to live in or visit Jerusalem. The Romans renamed Judea and called it Palestine. The Jews regrouped with help from religious leaders called rabbis. The synagogues and rabbis became important because the Jews no longer had temples or priests. One famous rabbi was named Yohanan ben Zakkai. When the Romans captured Jerusalem in Ad 70, he persuaded them to spare the city of Yavna. There, he set up a school to keep teaching the Torah. His efforts helped the Jewish religion survive the destruction of the temple and the loss of Jerusalem. The rabbis eventually put their teachings about Jewish laws in writing. These writings, along with other Jewish legal traditions, are called the Talmud. The Talmud discusses issues faced in daily life. It remains an important record of Jewish teachings.